Uh, let's speak to Leroy Rossinia, who's vice president of show racism, the red card, former Fulham, QPR, Bristol, West Ham. I could go on. Leroy, good afternoon to you. Afternoon, Ian. Nice to have you with us. So, I mean, it shouldn't be who's right, who's wrong, because this argument has more complexity to it than that. But broadly speaking, has Tyrone Mings got a point here when he says that it's a bit rich coming from a woman who's against the knee uh, to suddenly start getting all the evangelical about racism? I, I do think he has a point. I think you're right. It's more complex than that. I think that what Tyrone was trying to point out and Gareth Southgate and the, the rest of the team, well, this is a human rights issue, not a political issue. Uh, from the very first time that they, they tried to explain what they were trying to do in terms of supporting others within the team and people in society, that this was an anti-racist uh, uh, thing and that, uh, and that has been totally taken by Priti Patel and turned around into a political thing. Uh, and I think Tyrone was just hitting back. I thought it was, I, I, look, I've always felt, Ian, that footballers are role models and people who say, look, that they, they, they shouldn't get involved in things. Well, they're the ones who are experiencing a lot of this as well. And I think it is sure. important for them to get involved in things uh, and and to to start a debate, just like Raheem Sterling did after that that incident that where he had racist abuse. And he did it in a really adult, I thought, mature way, which ignited the debate. And I think Tyrone is right. I think that Priti Patel got it wrong. Um, it is a gesture. I don't think anybody can say there isn't anything else but a gesture. But you know what? Gestures can be very powerful. They can lead to good things happening. Yeah. And from my experience working within anti-racism, this gesture, not only by the England team, but by the Premier League, has led to not only it being high up on the agenda of people's minds, but actual action in terms of people saying, look, yeah, this is something that we need to really do need to resolve. So do you, you think, know, I'm with you uh, on this one. Do you think, Leroy, though, a lot of fans might look at this and think, look, we the red card campaign that you're involved with, uh, involved with has been amazing. The kick it out campaign is amazing. Most supporters mm -hmm. got behind that. And then suddenly, all, almost out of nowhere, something no one ever did in this country five minutes ago, getting on your knee, Suddenly, here's another. What's this about? Are we meant to all suddenly think, oh, well, we're all mad racists here. Every football fan is a racist. Who is it aimed at? What, is it a bit disproportionate? Why have we imported this gesture from one lone incident in the United States when a, a, a top athlete took the knee in protest at the, the, the national anthem? And then, of course, everything that happened in the last year or so in the States. What, why are we being fed this as supporters when we're already on board with some really effective campaigns that have helped to kick racism out of football and show racism the red card? Because, Ian, they're not effective enough. <laughs> we need more. We need a lot more. And uh, you know what you're saying about this gesture that I, I, if somebody doesn't want to take the knee and they feel it, they, it's associated with something that they don't want to be associated with, you know what? I don't really mind. But you I could be against think... it. Could You could be against it without being a mad racist. I think that's where uh, some players uh, feel uh, affronted. Absolutely. But if you don't want to do the gesture, what I'll say to people, what do you want to do about it? If you're not a racist, what do you want to do about it? And it's not about the gesture. It's about that this is a gesture that is being done by professional footballers because of the racism not, that not only they've experienced, but our society has experienced. And Gareth Southgate, I just th think, has shown real leadership because, Ian, you know, I've seen too many uh, leaders crumble uh, when people have, have come up against it, when they've got, had the pushback that Gareth had. Yeah, true. He said, no, this is something that we want to do, and this is the reason why we want to do it. But why are there a few other countries? Johnson, but, but I just no say, Peter and Boris Johnson have, t have turned it into something else. Now, I don't, if people see it as that, I, look, from their point of view, I'm not going to argue with them. But what I will say is that you say show race in the red car, kick it out. They are effective campaigns. But when you have top players and top people saying, we want to get on board with this, it brings change much, much quicker and much, much better. But are we ever going to get rid of, you know, some bloke sitting in his pants in a bed, sit firing off racist tweets for Rashford and Saka? Oh, we're, we're never, you can't legislate in any way for that. There's always going to be some, like there is any other area of criminality on the terraces itself. I mean, mm -hmm. we have... I'm not going to be stupid enough to say we've completely got rid of racism, but compared to when you were playing, Leroy, you know what it's like to be uh, at Upton Park or Craven Cottage and mm -hmm. some of those things that were shouted out at you. And I can remember some of your contemporaries and I've spoken and got to know some of those guys over the years. You know, it was horrendous. None of that happens now on a Saturday. You, that, that simply isn't there, right? That, well, 
it isn't there because it's a crime uh, for it to Correct. be there, but it's yeah. under, under the surface. And that's why it all exploded when Saka missed that penalty. It's interesting you say that it's a, a bloke in his pants in the bed seat. That's how I used to envisage people used to send me the bullets through the post and, and the vile racist abuse. But you know what? They're in the dangerous. That's overt racism and it comes straight at you and you can deal with that. It's the racism that's lying under the surface that is so, so dangerous. And that, at the moment, we're experiencing it on social media with people who think that, yeah, we could... But are they really... Are people really think these are people in bed sits on their own, just reacting? I mean, no, of course they're not. But they're, they're always... Already, they're, they, really, they're already I, to I go. It. As soon as Saka missed that penalty, they were ready to go. It was it was organised. It was... Uh, and it was... Re- and tell you what, the people talking about, you know, the monkey emojis, it was so much more vile. It was more Ku Klux Klan. Oh, they were some of the more you. tame ones. You're absolutely right. I mean, I looked it's into... Like, if that is the way to look at it, you're right. I mean, this was as bad as it could get. And it was... Yeah. It, you're right. It did feel orchestrated. It did feel like this had almost ready... People were ready to cut and paste what they'd seen on some dicey forum somewhere and like, right, let's go for it, lad. Um, Of course that's out there, but I guess a lot of fans still look at this and think, well, actually, you know, I want to get those guys exposed as well. But when I sit there watching a match, um, I don't need this statement before football because I I sense that it's being aimed at me as if I've got to apologise for something, as if I've Mm -hmm. got to say... I'm part of the problem. And I think that's how some, perhaps some supporters are seeing this. Well, that's, if they see that, then they're, they're wrong. They're, they're part of the solution. That's why it's being aimed. It's not because they're those people who aren't racist. And I explain to people sometimes that not being a racist is not good enough because when you allow people to be a racist around you and you don't challenge it in any way, shape or form, I don't mean going up and talking to them. I mean, challenging it in any way, shape or form. You actually condone that behaviour. And what we're trying to do is turn people into anti-racists and turn them into a part of the solution. And I heard a fan that at the end of that game, Ian, you know, saying that people don't want it you know, shoved down their throat. But as soon as Saka missed that penalty, a lot of the people of colour left the ground because they knew what was going to happen. And people don't want that around them. They don't want, because of something that happens on the football pitch, people to all of a sudden feel threatened because they knew what was coming from people around them. And not those people you're talking about, but the people who were sat next to them, who... We are threatening. So that's where we are. Everybody's part of the solution. And when we talk about education, people you hear that people say, oh, we need education, we need education. We need education for the people who who, who, who indulge in that racist abuse and see if they can turn them around. If not, well, so be it. We need education for our children, which we, we have. You know, we go into schools. And by the way, kids get it better than adults. And we need education for businesses and institutions mm. because it, it's so much more subtle than that man just in a bed set, you know, sat in, in his pants. There's more to it than that. Yeah. And I think people are starting to get that. So, some some people have uh, impressive jobs at estate agents, as we're beginning to find out as well, who, who do this <laughs> yeah. kind of thing. Um, I mean, in terms of where it goes next, just a final point on this, Leroy. I mean, is it time now to say, OK, that gesture, that particular symbol has, you know, it's been done. Now there is a bit of a divide and there is a danger that could really backfire. So, you know, what about you know, we start next season where we move on to something else because you no, know, I mentioned no, no. red card has been successful kick it out has been successful nobody called it controversial nobody said it was stupid everybody was on board with it but this somehow has divided the room so surely time to say we've done it that's it now no but it's brought the, it's brought the, the, the team together I think it's for the players to decide what they want to do in I don't think it's for us from the outside like Peter Patel deciding what it actually represents and so if the players want to do it then they should be allowed to do it if they don't they're not absolutely fine, but it's their decision. They've taken this on themselves. If Gav took it on themselves, this is something that they really wanted to do as an England team. The teams in the Premier League okay. took it on themselves. This is something they really wanted to do. This is down to them. It's not for us to implement what we feel they should be doing. And that's exactly what Pity P- Patel has done and got it all wrong, by the way, totally wrong from start to finish. Oh. So it's for the players to decide when, if they don't want to do the gesture anymore, they want to go on to something else. Absolutely fine. But just I'll just finish on this here. That gesture has really, because they've done it on a constant basis over a period of weeks and months, it has kept anti-racism at the forefront of, of, of the news. And it's made my job so much easier in getting funded, in getting into schools, to getting people to listen, in getting people to talk about it. It has been a really good and positive thing. There, there are negative things to everything. 
But this has been a really good okay. and positive thing for the players to decide. Listen, Leroy, it's been great to have you on, sir. Thank you for your time. Leroy Rossini, of course, Vice President of Show Racism, the red card. You might depart on much of what he said there. I know I certainly do, but I thought his way of imparting his position on this was incredibly impressive.